Hey, how's it going? Ray Reese here, personal training manager, Anytime Fitness, Chestnut Hill. Um, doing a little bit something different today. Today is Q&A with you and Ray. All right, um, I've had a couple of questions come through on the app and I wanted to address some of them. Um, and I may try to, I don't know if I can get in multiple, I may try to stick with one for now, but you know, keep them coming and I can try to um, record one of these um, to be uploaded on Friday. So Q and A with you and Ray. Um, question that I've gotten that um, every trainer in the universe has probably gotten uh, hundreds of times is what's the best way to work my core? What's the best way to work my core? Now I will tell you before I answer you, I have to dispel um, at least one thing. The question itself, what's the best way to work my core is inherently problematic because there is usually an incorrect presumption that precedes the question or, um, or that the question is based upon. When people say, I want to work my core, usually I'll ask them, why? Why do you think you need to work on your core? Why, 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 why? What makes you say? And usually there's a lot of self-diagnosis. There's a lot of, you know, oh, that, but it usually winds up being one of three things. Um, I want to get my tummy down. I want a flat tummy. I want to get my tummy down, right? Um, yeah, I want to lose weight around. I want to, I want to lose, I want to lose this. Right? Uh, it's one. Uh, two, I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna have toned abs. I wanna have awesome, I wanna have awesome, awesome abs and grrr, ripped abs. Right? Three, they actually want to have a strong core or be able to actually use their core in the manner in which um, it's intended, which is for stability. People um, may feel like, oh, I don't, have a, I don't have a lot of balance, I don't have a lot of stability, my, my, my core is weak. Now, those last few people out of every hundred that comes to me and says, hey, what's, what's the best way to work my core? Out of every hundred, the last group, the people that um, are talking about stability and functionality, one person, one person, will will um, try to will be inquiring about stability and functionality. Um, so with that, moving on, I'm I'm going to need to you know dispel some more myths or explain to you really how your body, in general works and how your core relates to that. Um, so weight loss, saying, hey, I wanna, I wanna lose this right here. I wanna lose my tummy. You want to burn off unnecessary or unwanted calories. You want to get rid of unwanted fat. It just so happens that for most people, it collects, it'll pool sort of right here or 
seem like it. Uh, the, the reasoning for that is because, so what determines your, your, your structure, your shape? Um, primary thing, your skeleton. Your skeleton is gonna be this high and this wide and this shape and limbs are gonna be this long. That's, those ratios are not gonna change, right? Skeleton upon which sits muscle, okay? And uh, on top of that muscle sits your fat. So that's going to determine your shape, all right? Um, it just so happens that for most people, when they um, put on fat, it just, it, this area here generally isn't very curvy. So when you have fat sitting in an area where it can't really surround a whole lot, you, you're gonna get more rolls and stuff, you know, as opposed to like your arm, which, you know, I got my biceps and my forearms and the shoulders, and there's a whole lot of curves and stuff going on, muscle stuff that your fat is sitting on, you know, it's gonna, it's going to look differently. So for me, somebody like me, I don't have, so I have, I have a stomach. What I don't have are a lot of rolls. I have fat, I have a definitive layer of fat, but the way my body collects it, it co it's my, <laughs> it's on my, the actual muscles as well, okay? And so my, it's on my organs and this and the other. So um, the way I distribute fat usually tends to be very even. So I tend to not have rolls or a lot of jiggly stuff um, because it gets evenly distributed. I'm fortunate in that way. And not everybody else is that fortunate. I mean, some people, it doesn't, it, it doesn't collect inside and distribute evenly. It just comes out in front and, and gains. Um, and so that's where you get, basically you get flab and you get rolls when you have more fat than what your muscles can provide a shape for. Um, and so the, the key example there is like um, breasts. Breasts are fat that aren't sitting on any, they're, they're nothing but fat. And so hence they have certain properties. Um, it's the way it goes, right? Okay, so when it comes to trying to get rid of this, you can't spot reduce. You can't, you can't just get rid of this. You have to get rid of um, calories all over. I mean, and if you could, if you could just take away this area, it, it would look kind of ridiculous only because like I said, you have fat here, you have fat here, you have fat all over. And if let's say you got rid of just the fat here, but you still had, you know, fat here and fat here and fat around the ankles, you'd be like, what? What's happening there? What, what is going on with that person's shape? It's like, they're blobby, skinny. And then I like, well, blobby again. It look like they got on seven waist trainers. Um, so yeah, you can't, think of it like, uh, a bowl of pudding, ah, pudding, right? If you had a bowl of pudding and you took a cup and you scooped out, you know, one cup of pudding, you're not going to have just like a cup shaped hole in there. All that's gonna fill in, right? And so as you keep scooping things out, that, you know, layer, that uh, quantity of pudding is going to go down, right? So yeah, just keep that in mind. You can't, you can't burn, you know, calories in one area. Now, why this is particularly problem, problematic 
for the abs is that so you can you can build muscle again you can build muscle and add some shape to that on top of that skeletal frame so that that fat has something to spread itself over shape itself over your abs are only ever going to be so big like you're never going to see anybody walking around with like abs that go right your abs are never going to come out here because that'd be ridiculous right um if it did it, you would look like oh my goodness you see some of these bodybuilders that have uh like distended guts because of any number of things but it's called um palumboism right um you you don't want that you don't it would look ridiculous it would look you're, you're so your abs are only ever really going to get so big um unlike say your your arms your chest your back your legs like these all of these things can grow exponentially greater um than your abdominus rectus okay so you're losing fat all over right so that's that's just the that's the that's group number one i i want to i want to lose fat around my tummy so just the best way to lose fat around your tummy is to burn a lot of calories do muscle building exercises strength building exercises so that you can build muscle burn calories and retain your shape all the while losing fat that's the best way to get rid of your tummy is to you know eat sensibly and get strong retain your strength do muscle building um and we can go into that more later the importance of muscle building um to who um we talking about i want to get a six pack right i want to work on my course and get a six pack the, going back to sort of the first thing there's you're doing a bunch of crunches if you if you have a high percentage of body fat like me myself i think i'm at i'm presently at 28 percent, 29 percent, which is higher than what i want to be or where i i should be um and that's my journey that's what i'm working on um i'm not going to get a six pack because i have fat on top of it like you can't you can't create you can you can you already have a six pack you just have layers of stuff on top of it um think of it like this let's say you have a you have a mattress right you've got a mattress and you take an actual six pack right a, a six pack of uh you know water or you know sparkling water a six pack of sparkling water something healthy the six pack of sparkling water boom put it on the bed right if you cover that six pack with a sheet okay you can still see that it's a six pack right you can still you can see the shape you cover it with another sheet all right you still see the shape you can still see the six pack and more sheets and more sheets and then blankets you're not going to see that six pack right before you can you have to peel away those layers you got to get those layers of fat off of your six pack in order for people to be able to see it right um so crunches you know we said hey we got to burn got to burn fat all over the body right we got to burn calories your abs your core doesn't burn a nearly as many calories as other exercise it's not a fast powerful muscle it's a sustaining it's a a, a, a slow uh sturdy stabilizing muscle it's not a thing that's designed to exert as much force as say a bench press or a squat or a deadlift or 
a pull-up. There's, it's just not. So doing a bunch of crunches isn't going to get you a visibly six pack, a visible six pack sooner than general muscle building and um, responsible eating is going to. Um, now you can still do crunches and you can still do those core exercises because then, hey, once, once you get those layers off, okay, well then you've got your, your six pack already there. But the, the number one determinant of the visibility of a six pack is going to be how much, how many blankets you got on there, right? Um, if you think of, say, Brad Pitt in um, Fight Club, he had a six pack, but it, I mean, it wasn't very, oof, boom, again, it wasn't like, you know, he had these bodybuilder ripples. He just had no fat on top of his abdominus rectus muscles. All right. Um, so you got to get rid of, you got to get rid of those layers. Now, that being said, let's say, hey, you know, you got your body, you got your body fat percentage down and now you're really trying to sculpt those abs. All right. There's a ton of, ton of things you can do. Um, and crunches and twists and, you know, side bends and, you know, back hypers and all of that stuff. Um, but for the most part, you really just want to focus on getting your body weight, getting your body fat percentage to a healthy, respectable level. And also know, and this is kind of a, generally speaking, um, it has been my experience that ladies tend to care more about having a a flat tummy and or a six pack than, than guys do. Guys, there's still guys that want a six pack. However, one has to understand that just because um, women t tend to have a higher body fat percentage than guys, just for any number of reasons, but it's, super unlikely unless you've got nothing but time to, to diet train and da, 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 unless you're like, you know, Brittany and your, your livelihood depends on being in shape. You're probably not going to get, you know, uh, uh, some sort of, Marvel Comics six pack, all right? And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That is not an indication of a flaw or a failure or a curse or, or anything. Um, it, it doesn't indicate lack of functionality. Um, so just be more concerned with just having a, a healthy level of fat and know that the more layers that you take off, the easier it's going to be to see a six pack. So now group three, group three, the people that are concerned about stability and such. This is also an opportune time to bring up another sort of, um, a mistake, I would, I, there's a better term, but when it comes to core, so people want to get in shape, they want to have a strong core, they want to have a great core, they want to have good core functionality. People tend to, you know, think abs, right? It's just, abs. They want to have strong abs, good looking abs, but your core 
is, it's a bunch of things. It's your, it's your abs, right? So it's your, it's your abs, it's your obliques, your internal and external obliques. It is, it's your lower back, your glutes, all right? D just for starters, okay? Because here's the thing, if we're talking functionality, if we're talking about keeping yourself stable, we're talking about the function of the core, the core by itself doesn't keep you stable. That's just like its primary job. So like your, your, um, your lower back, so the muscles that keep you stable, that keep, that help the core and everything keep you stable. All right, you've got your abs, your obliques, your lower back, you have your upper back and your spine, your spine muscle, like it's, you still have, you have muscles in, you know, in the upper part of your spine, your spinous rectus, right? Um, uh, you've got, so you got your spine muscles, you have the lower back muscles, obliques, abs, your glutes. You also have your, your hips and your, your quads and even more of like your glutes and hamstrings, which keep you from doing that, right? They keep you, um, keeping you stable. Then there's also your, your calves, you know, your calves keep you from falling forward. They keep you upright. They, I mean, they push you up, I like guess you go up the stairs, but, um, you know, there's all of those muscles that keep you from just being wiggly and wobbly, right? So, um, the thing that keeps your shoulders back, you've got those back muscles, but you have the spine, your posture, right? The thing that keeps this from happening, again, lower back. The thing that keeps um, you from just falling over at the hips, uh, you have your you have your glutes and your hamstrings, again, which help with hip extension. Then also you have your hip flexors, which bring your knees forward, which bring your legs forward. So you have all of this, you have your, you have your uh, hip adductors that bring your, you know, your knees together, right? You have all of these muscles. So, so when we're talking about um, what's the, the best way to work your core, if you are working your full body, if you're standing up, if you're, you know, pushing weights overhead and you're squatting and deadlifting and bench pressing and doing push-ups and planks and walkouts, you're working your core, right? So, um, I mean, let's, let's think about this for a little bit, all right? So, all right, so if I'm, if I'm bending over to pick something up, um, so even like, let's say, get myself a kettlebell. All right, so the very act of me holding this kettlebell anywhere out in front of me, my lower back has to keep me sturdy and upright. My upper back, you know, has to, has to act. My hips have to keep me upright. My calves, you know, my ankles and all that stuff have to keep me upright, all right? If I'm going down, oh, that lower back has to stay sturdy and stable. That's what it does, that's what it's supposed to do. Um, you don't have to do a whole lot of isolation exercises. You don't have to necessarily target the, the, um, 
the specific muscles. You just have to do the activities. You know, you have to use your body normally with resistance. So I know that, hey, if I'm going down for push-ups, I'm in a plank. All right, so my hip flexors are keeping me steady. My abs are keeping me steady. Um, <laughs> my chest, there's so many things. When I come back up with the walkout or walk up, glutes, hamstrings, lower back, if I'm doing if I'm doing squats, right? If I'm doing squats, if I'm holding a bar, holding my, my dumbbell, those back muscles are stabilizing me. My, my obliques, my side muscles are stabilizing. My inner thighs, all right? So many things. If I'm here, my body wants to do this, boom, those abs. Like if you're, I mean not abs, sorry, your obliques. If you're, if you've got a suitcase, you've got groceries, right? Same thing. That's how you work your core. You know, doing full body movements out in space um, and not not relying on the machines. The machines have a purpose. They build strength, but they don't build stability. The only way you're gonna build skill and stability is in doing real world movements with resistance. Um, so a, a, an exact example, a perfect example, I had a, um, I had a client who was a veterinarian and she comes to me and she says, hey, I need to work on my core. Okay, why, why do you say that? Oh, because I have a weak core. Okay, well, well why? Did a, did a doctor say that you have a weak core? Did you have a deficiency? Like, no, no, when I'm at work, it's getting harder and harder for me to, to lift these heavier breeds of dogs and transfer them and like, I just really feel it. It's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. You don't necessarily need a stronger or better core as much as you need better technique. You need to understand what it is your body is trying to do, what it needs to do. Um, and you need to strengthen all over. Um, it's not just, you know, the equator here that you're trying to work on. It's, it's everything. So she, basically, um, uh, she had trouble lifting dogs. So our regimen um, was basically, if you can pretend that this was a sandbag, then we're doing, we're doing squats, right? If you're saying that Ugh, this is the, the motion that you're having trouble with, all right? Let's say you're, you're lifting um, 70 pound dogs. I don't know, just, well, let's not say, let's say you got 60 pound dogs or something, right? Well, we're gonna work with 25 pounds, right? And we're gonna work our way up to 30 pounds and then 35, so on and so forth, all right? We're gonna work on the actual skill and I'm going to coach you through it, all right? As opposed to just saying, oh, grab a sandbag. It's like, all right, well, you gotta get your hips, you know, you gotta get your hips down and back as opposed to letting your knees go forward. Um, you don't want those heels coming up, all right? So, exaggerating here, but trying to keep that straight back as opposed to hunching over, you know, that is gonna be what builds the skill and what builds the stability, the, the stability that you want, the functionality.
right? Um, yeah, now again, doing core or muscle specific exercises like crunches and side bends and all of that, all that other stuff, there's nothing wrong with it. Just know what it does. It will strengthen those muscles, but it won't strengthen your skill, your overall skill and balance if that's not a, a, an activity that you're ever going to have to do outside. You know, if you're, if for whatever reason, um, you know, if you work on the docks or something and you're like, oh man, every time I pick up these boxes, my back hurts. I need a strong, I need to work on my core. No, you need to work on getting a straighter back. You need to work on getting your hips back. You need to work on bracing your back, inhaling and driving through with the hips. Now, there may be an issue with, with strength in certain areas, but you work on that. Your body will catch up. Your weaknesses will work themselves out the more that you work that area. Now, if you, you, know, if you recognize somehow based on uh, a trainer's uh, you know, um, assessment or a doctor's assessment that you do have a specific muscle or strength deficiency in a specific area, then there are going to be exercises that you can do. There are going to be, say, more um, lower back strengthening things and more glute ham exercises. But generally speaking, you know, uh, your weaknesses will work themselves out relative to functionality, you know, or you'll develop, you know, greater skill around them. Um, but generally, if you're not competing, if you're not like doing bench press or something, you gotta, oh, I gotta really work my tries and this, that, and the other, and da, 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 I gotta, my squats, my, my calves are, you know, failing me or getting pulled, you know, all right. But again, unless you have a specifically assessed um, deficiency that, you know, a, a trainer, or your physician has said that you have, um, you, you may just have some uh, basic things that you need to do. All right, so that's it for today. Um, your your Q&A with you and Ray. Um, keep those questions coming. And understand, I know there's a, power, there's a little bit of trepidation um, with regards to, you know, reaching out. Sometimes you feel like maybe you're being judged or you're criticized. The, our job is to help guide you on this journey. Um, we don't want you to feel, um, you know, we don't want you to feel put off. We don't want you to feel, uh, you know, anxious or what have you. Um, so whatever, whatever, way is most comfortable for you in order to get our assistance and feedback taken. You know, send an email, send a text, um, you know, leave a comment or whatever you want to do. But we're here to help you get to um, where you're trying to go. That being said, um, I already have, you know, I've got some other questions coming in. Um, this one was a little bit more, you know, uh, complex because there was a lot there. There's like actually sort of like three questions in one. Um, but I hope to be able to answer multiple questions and be able to, you know, um, get you on the right track. So, you know, just keep this in mind, you know, when you're, when you are working your regular workout, you know, focus on your form, focus on keeping you know, the back straight, the chest forward, shoulders back, hips back if they need to, if you need to hinge, you know, not locking your knees, so on and so forth. And if this is overwhelming, gah, reach out, reach out. We are here to help. All right. So thank you all very much. 
Hope to see you here sooner than later. Um, that's all for today. Your Q&A with you and Ray. Ray Reese, Anytime Fitness Chestnut Hill. Talk to you later. See you. Bye-bye.